What's up, Morning Fam? So today, yo, what's up, Morning Fam? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a silicone mold to make your own concrete obstacles. Let's get into it. So this is everything you'll need. You need a object to cast. Then you need a big object, kind of a tub, whatever, to actually cast your object in. It's gotta be the same size as your object, but a little bit larger. And then of course you need some silicone. And I'm gonna use this Umu Smooth On silicone. It's about 30 bucks. You can get it at Blick Art Supplies and uh, we'll see what it does. And I'm using this yellow, I'm sorry, I'm using this orange curb here that I got from Goofy Digits FB. Definitely check out their shop. They have lots of really awesome three printed fingerboard supplies. So the box I chose to use for my like, to pour my silicone in, like to cast my object inside of, it didn't have a flat bottom, but I had this like flat top piece. So what I did is I cut it square and then fit it inside of the bottom of the vessel I was gonna do my casting in. So did a little bit of cutting and not a lot of measuring, just kind of some cutting just to make it, you know, fit the bottom there and uh, got that fit flush. So from there, I actually took some double-sided tape and taped it, um, you know, to those ridges there you see. And then I stuck my clear plastic piece to that. So then that would ensure I had a totally flat bottom to do my casting on. Now, I did take some painter's tape and I wrapped the edges to make sure no silicone, you know, got underneath there or inside of there, you know, it went to waste. And then from there, I took some more double-sided tape and I taped the bottom of my object and then taped that down to the floor. And then that would ensure that when I poured the silicone on top of it, that I wouldn't, you know, start moving and going a bunch of places or floating up to the top or something weird like that. So here everything is all nice and secure. And now it's time to start getting into the silicone. And this is the really messy part. So silicone is a two part mixture and you take both of them. First, you have to mix each individually quite a lot. And then you mix them together even more. And that leaves you with this kind of purpley liquid very much like quicksand, that's what it reminds me of. And you wanna totally cover your object. So of course, depending on what kind of object you're casting, you're gonna use you know, more or less silicone. And then of course, depending how big your vessel is that you're casting in, that'll also do a lot of you know, depending. So about right here, I realized that my vessel was way too big, way too flippin' huge, and I was going to have to use all my silicone to get it to work. And I had this thought in my head, maybe I'll tilt it to one side and then tape it off and then tilt it back and tape off the other side to make the area smaller. But I mean, that would have been a Herculean effort. So I ended up taking some extra pocket curbs and dropping them to the bottom on the uh, far ends there. And that helped to displace some silicone and put some more on the top of the actual curb. And you can kind of see two of them there. From there, I put a tile down and then measured it on a level to make sure it was, you know, at 0.0, .0 totally level surface, and I let my silicone mold dry there overnight. So here I am the next morning, and I'm trying to get the silicone out of the plastic piece. I thought it would be a little more simpler, um, but it wasn't. I had to kind of cut some things and kind of break that plastic box open. I wanted to reuse it, you know, be able to reuse it, which I probably still can, but I did do quite a number on it, getting the piece out of there. So got my huge silicone brick out of there, realized how much silicone I used and how much I, I probably could use like half the amount, you know, in a smaller vessel, but oh well, you live and learn. This is my first time doing this. So I cut off any of the excess and then I poured some Crete. And as you can see, the first pour, a little bit too messy. I poured way too much. And let's see how they turned out. I'm pretty excited about this. Got one more dry in there. And I got some other ones drying right here. These ones are almost good to go. Put a layer of polyurethane coating on them today. Just kind of finishing dry, it's still a little bit tacky. But the mold was a huge success. Couple things I could have done different. Let's go upstairs and I'll share with you everything that I learned. Okay, so super, super stoked how this came out. Here's where we started, the 3D printed one, and here's where we finished off. Here is the concrete one. Uh, had a vision and here it is brought to life. It's so cool. Couple things I learned though, 
Um, I probably used too much silicone. You so you saw in my video how large my initial tray was. I probably could have made it like a bit smaller. So actually, during the creation of the curb, I kind of realized I was using like too much silicone. So what I did is I took some extra pocket curbs and kind of placed them on the far edges. And what that did is it helped displace some silicone and push some up. So then I had more um, on the top. That was, my, that, was my, that was my main concern. I wanted to make sure I didn't have just a thin layer, you know, on the bottom of my mold. I wanted it to be substanti substantially thick. So that was a nice little hack that I did. But in the end, I probably just used too much silicone. I probably could use about half the amount for my mold and did it in a smaller, you know, vessel. But, um, you know, for what I had available at the time, uh, worked out pretty well. And I could, you can always hand make, you know, your, your uh, mold shape too. I know some people will, you know, tape or, you know, take cardboard or plastic pieces and make a custom, you know, uh, bath or whatever you would call it to kind of pour your silicone in. I probably should have done something similar, but at the same time, the, the uh, Swiffer wet container I had was pretty much the perfect size. So, um, worked out well. That's definitely something to pay attention to is, you know, you want to make sure your container that you're making your mold in is bigger than your object, but not too much bigger. <clears throat> then you'll use too much silicone. But in the end, this probably took like 25 bucks worth of silicone, so it's not too bad. Um, you know, but for, you know, for next time, I think I could probably use that same amount and get two moles out of it. So definitely learned a lot. My first time doing it, and I gotta say, you know, for the first time, this came out really cool. Another thing is, is, so silicone, so one more thing is, is silicone gets more expensive as it has more elasticity to it. And the type I used is a little bit like it tears easy. It's kind of a lower grade silicone. So my mold, if I tried hard enough, I could tear it right in half. So I got to make sure I like, you know, be very careful with it. Even when I clean it, I was cleaning it earlier and I, and I realized I was like kind of digging into the, one of the corners. And um, so you definitely got to be careful with that. But if you use a higher grade silicone, it'll be more stretchy and less prone to snapping and breaking. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. But for trying it out for the first time, that Umu silicone um, did a great job. It was, you know, it's like 30 bucks for the little set there of the two bottles. And it totally, totally did a good job. You can even still see like some of the, um, you can even still see some of the printing lines from the 3D print, you know, on the actual curb. So, I mean, it picked up lots of lots of detail, you know, all the detail that I would want it to. And these look super fun. Can't wait to session it. I can't touch it right now though, because the clear coat is still drying. It's a little bit tacky still. So I'm gonna give it a little more time to dry, but I'll post an edit with it hopefully in the next couple days. So stay tuned. And also stay tuned on the website. I should have them up on the website hopefully this week, you know, coming up in the next couple days as well. So huge thanks to Goofy Digits. And Ryan has an Etsy store. So if you're looking for 3D printed objects for your fingerboard setup, definitely check out his Etsy store. You can Google Goofy Digits FB Etsy and it will pop up first. So my bad, I wanted to chime in real quick. I actually got that wrong. His Etsy store is called Future Bound Prints, all one word, but his Instagram is called Goofy Digits. And there's a look at all the colors they offer in their board rack. So I want to just chime in and clear that up. It's actually Future Bound Prints or Goofy Digits on Instagram. He sells lots of really cool stuff. Mailboxes, newspaper boxes, water fountains, um, weathered stuff, non-weathered stuff, all kinds of really cool, you know, fingerboard scale 3D printed objects. So check out his shop. He also sells board racks, which are very, very handy. Everyone needs, you know, some board racks. And they hold six, yeah, they hold six decks, which is really cool. And they're nice and sturdy. It's all one piece, nice and solid. And uh, definitely, if you need a board rack, check out Goofy Digits. So huge thank you to Ryan for hooking me up with this curb. I'm going to be sending a couple of these concrete curves his way, along with a custom barrier. And uh, those should be on the way this coming week. So uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe, of course. That helps with the channel a lot. We are getting, we are on the way to monetization. We're not close, but we're definitely on the way. So the more interaction you have with this channel, the more helps me out to keep creating content and bringing you guys cool, fun stuff. And of course, 
hit up the website, anxietyoffline.com for all your concrete fingerboard obstacle needs. And I got a couple sets of grind FB inverted kingpins and lock nuts for sale too. So don't be late to grabbing those. Also, I got some fingerboard travel bags, lots of really cool stuff. So check all that out, anxietyoffline.com. And that about wraps up this video. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.